I'm sitting across from him and I say, what's your best price? Go. Knock, knock. Andy says, hello. Go. Most of you in here, you, you, you get nervous when people ask for a better deal. It's no big deal. You guys get it? Burn it at both ends. Like the fire causing mayhem. I'm not tired. I've been waiting. I'm not forsaken. All right, guys, so here we go. So I'm going to move around this room and I'm going to go fast, okay? So let's do this. Number one, what do you do? Kitchen remodeling. Okay, kitchen remodeling. Come here. All right, so grab him a mic. Somebody grab my mic. So he says he does kitchen remodeling, right? What's number one objection you got? Probably, I got I to gotta talk to my wife. Okay, cool. So this is simple. Ready? Hey, I really, by the way, am I, am I giving you all the numbers? Is this where you give them all the numbers? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's sitting down, he's present, he's presenting all the numbers and I say, Hey man, I really appreciate it. Thanks for so much. This is going to be a kitchen remodel. I'm going to talk to my wife. I'm going to get back with you. Go. Hey, I completely understand you're going to talk to your wife. Um, I believe you spoke with your wife that you were going to come here. We're going to look at the cabinets, choose the stone. That was a decision you guys made together before coming here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I believe if you were to pick this stone or this cabinet and move forward with this decision, I don't think that's something that she would be frustrated about, right? No, I just want to talk to her because it's a lot of money. I completely understand. Um, when is it that we could get together and I can meet with you guys so we can... Okay, now listen, I'm going to ask you guys a question. Just question, do we want to close them now or do we want to close them like later on? Okay, if a customer leaves, are they going to return? No. Guys, listen, I want to tell you something. I want to really believe in people, okay? But there's someone else somewhere else that's better than you. And what I've learned is this, a lot of people, they do a really good job and a lot of people just, they say what he said, hey, I got to talk to my wife and they drive right across the street and they buy across the street. Why? Just how people work. I don't know. Well, no, no, it could be the real objection, whether it is or it's not. If you don't close them right now, what does it matter? Someone else will. Okay. Now, how can we close this? Number one, obviously we wouldn't have had a conversation if this wasn't important to your wife. Would you agree, yes or no? Yes. Is that important to establish that? Yeah. Look, you wouldn't have taken the time to drive out here today if your wife wasn't important enough for us to get her to that kitchen. Would you agree? Yes. yes, you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you a question. You spend your money on a lot of things in life, which most of them probably don't make your wife super happy. If your wife's anything like mine, when she loves being at home, her favorite place to be is in the kitchen. You guys got children? She probably loves cooking them food. She probably finds her time in the kitchen when she loves the kitchen. Now, obviously, because you're out here, there's a dream kitchen that she wants. Now, you seem like a businessman, and I'm sure everything in your life that you want, you chase and you go to get it. Your wife sounds pretty easy to please. If we had her a dream kitchen, she'd probably have to be happy as hell and happy wife, happy life. You work hard for your money. How much of that money are you really spending to show your wife how much you care about her? If you could find the courage to say yes, regardless of what it costs, and you went home and you said, hey, baby girl, didn't matter what it cost, you're number one to me, and to prove that, I went ahead and pulled the trigger on the kitchen remodel because you're number one in my life, do you think she'd have a problem with that? Okay, so what do we want to do? Move forward. Get the credit card. Move forward. Listen, here's what I want to tell you guys. Again, again, everything's common sense, okay? By the way, listen to me, does the kitchen even cost you any money? No, because no. No, it increases the property value. So basically the kitchen's free and your wife's gonna be happy as shit. So basically you just made your wife happy and it's free, it increases the appraisal value. Dude, it's a win-win for everybody. It's not costing you a dollar. Okay, that's it. By the way, let me ask you another question. What if you end up talking to your wife and she's like, I don't know. Listen, I don't know, it sounds like it's a lot of money. How many more times are we going to keep pushing the things that are important to her to the back burner? How many more times are we going to keep pushing the things that are important to her to the back burner? Do you know what your life would look like? When your wife says, no, I don't want to go out for my birthday, what she really means is I want to go out for my birthday. Listen, listen, I need you to understand something. There's a lot of times in your life where you pulled the trigger on things that you wanted to do. This is a time where it's a selfless act that you're going to pull the trigger on something that she wants to do. Do you understand? This is called a selfless act. It's called a selfless act. I know you want to talk to your wife. You know what she's going to say? Do it. Don't. No, she's going to say, don't do it. You know why? Because she's used to getting put second. 
No, 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 listen, I know, I'm gonna be honest. She's gonna say, don't do it. You know why? Because we've made business decisions in front of her. You've been at work all the time to earn this money and you've proved that your work, you spend way more hours with them than you do with her. Like she's used to being second. This is the time to prove to her that she is number one. This is a very easy decision. One that only the best men in the world can make. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so if you've got a wife like mine that takes good care of me, supports me, and allows me to do the things that I want to do, getting her a kitchen remodel is not your wife's decision. It's your decision. Do you believe that she's worth it to have it? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Has she done a good job raising your children? Yes. Okay. What else would we want to do but show her massive appreciation or by giving her something that she'd be happy, enjoying, taking care of the children in, and finding and spending her time in, right? It's an easy decision. It's one that needs to be made now, and it's important. Okay? Let's sign this. That's it, guys. That's how you handle stuff. Okay? All right. Now, I'm going to move on. All right. Give me this. You ready? Okay. What do you do? Mortgage. Mortgage. Ready? Okay. Hey, by the way, this is how I like to train. Okay? Now, do you sell homes? No, I finance them. Okay, you finance them. All right, cool. Number one objection. We want to wait two years until the rate comes down. Okay, so he says rate's too high. So give me an, so, so let me ask you a question. So, so, so you're a lender, or you work for a lender. Is that right? Do you do when loans most of the time when people are going to buy stuff, or do you do normally refinance? I'll purchase buying. Purchase buying. You guys ready? So a real estate agent finds someone that wants to buy a home. They contact you. You get in touch with them. Am I right? Correct. Okay. And then you provide the financing. I want you guys to understand what he does. And then they say, ah, we love the house, but you know what? Rates are too high. We're just going to hold off. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, and by the way, he gets paid a lot of money to get people to sign on these rates. Do you understand? Because you've seen the interest on a mortgage contract. Right? Correct. It's a big ass, big ass number. Okay, so my goal is he needs to get people to say yes. Are you ready? I'm gonna test you. All right, what's your name again? Will. Will, all right, here we go. So hey, Will, I really appreciate it. I love the home. Unfortunately, this rate's just too high. We're gonna hold off, go. So Andy, let me ask you this. In two years, I can show you how you're going to build generational wealth and have a lower payment. Would that interest you? Sure, but right now, I mean, I, I love this house. I just, the rate's too high. Okay. Whistle, whistle. Okay. All right, Will. Are you ready? Will, tell me the, Will, tell me the rate's too high. He's just laying on the devil's Guys, you ready? Everybody, Will, tell me the rate's too high. Hey, Andy, that rate's too high, bro. Hey, I totally understand. However, Will, you date the rate, you marry the payoff. Listen to me. Ten months ago, Will, if you'd have bought the same house, you'd have been in a bidding war with about 19 other people, and you'd have probably paid an additional three to four hundred thousand dollars more. That would have been a problem. Am I right, Will? Yes, sir. However, there's never been a better time for a consumer to make a deal on a home than right now. The fact that it's not a bidding war and the, and, and the homes are back to where they should be, Will, you can buy this house now at a better deal than you could have ever made in your life. But 10 months ago when it was a bidding war, rates were a little less. What would you have rather had? A way higher payoff or actually a lower interest rate? You'd have rather had a, a, a what? A good payoff and do what? Pay a little higher on an interest rate. Look. Nine, ten months ago, whenever the, the, the prices on homes were up, loan to value was so out of whack, you would have had to put three hundred to four hundred to five hundred thousand dollars down even to do the loan on a fair rate. However, today we can leverage the bank's money. You don't have to put more money down than needed, right? And by the way, you date the rate, you marry the payoff. So what I want you to do today is I want you guys to get your dream home because you and your family deserve it. You've already done the research. You've already done the time. You know it's a great deal. The bank's going to give you the money. You're not going to have to front it out of pocket. You're not putting more money down than you need to. And then when the credit unions lower the rates, whenever the feds drop the rates again, all you're going to do is refinance it. You've got your dream house. Your mortgage is in line. Your payoff is right. And guess what? You get a better rate when they come out with one. 
abracadabra. You take care of your family today. Anything that should be done today shouldn't be put off for tomorrow. Wouldn't you agree? Yep. Let's go ahead and wrap this up. Okay, so what I want you to understand is I said, I said you date the rate, you marry the payoff. Am I right? We're seeing the same thing in the automotive industry right now. Automotive salespeople are walking around. Rates are high. Man, shut up, dude. People were paying 50 grand more for cars a year ago. Like, where were you at? And they say, well, they want a better rate. Dude, listen to me. If you put in front of somebody, would you rather pay a little higher interest rate and not overpay for the car? They'd be like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? People don't want to overpay for shit, do they? Well, dude, a year ago, everybody overpaid for everything. The only offset is now the rates are a little higher. Dude, are rates permanent and forever, or can you refinance one if you qualify? Yeah, so what you need to say is that, listen to me, you date the rate, you marry the payoff. That's it, man. Dude, if you'd have bought a house 10 months ago, you'd have been in a bidding war, you'd have paid additional three or 400 grand more. Okay, however, today, there's never been a better deal. If I was in the automotive industry, I'd say there's never been a better deal in the history of time for a buy on a vehicle being a consumer. Now, the interest rate's a little higher, but who cares? Right now, you're getting 20 to 30% more for your trade-in, right? That's never happened before. You're getting a fair deal on my car, and the only thing we've got to have an exception to is the rate's going to be a little higher. Credit unions drop the rates, you refinance it, man, it's a dream deal, okay? Never been a better deal in the, time, in the history of time to make a deal on anything than right now. And by the way, is, are you having to pay cash for it? Or are they going to give you the money? They're going to give you the money. Okay, so when they lower it, just refinance it. You date the rate. The rate's never permanent. It's only as long as you want it until somebody offers something's better. Can you refinance a payoff? Yes. Well, you can refinance a payoff, but they don't bring the payoff amount down. You've got to bring cash out of your account to bring that payoff down. So listen, getting a good deal on a home right now is what you've always wanted. Dude, if it was 10 months ago, you would have overpaid. Could you imagine if you'd have bought the same house you'd have bought 10 months ago and you'd have paid an additional 300 grand and then you would have saw now that it's worth 300 grand less? All day long. It's everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, that's not gonna happen to you. We're gonna make the client feel comfortable to pass, go, and move forward. You guys feel me? Yep. Now listen, I'm, hey, maybe some of you in here are like, dude, I would have said something different. Totally cool. Listen, here's what I'll tell you. I believe I can close anybody, anytime, anyplace, anywhere, and I'm gonna tell you why. Number one, common sense. Common sense. Number two, wordplay. A lot of you that are in different industries, you need to learn some new language. I'm going to show you. If I was in the automotive industry, I would dust everybody's ass. You know why? If I had a dealership? Because I would go and I know what the automotive lingo is and I know how these guys talk. And I'll guarantee that if you drive around to 15 dealerships, they all say the same shit. So you know what I would do? I would train my team to speak differently. I would train my team to talk differently. I would train my team to act differently, to work differently, to believe differently. And guess what? When they came to my place, they would see different and they would buy. Okay? Dude, I promise you, man, if your team hasn't had any new training within the last 12 to 24 months, the art of selling doesn't exist in most businesses anymore. The art of selling is dead. You get it? We're going to bring it back alive. All right. Good job, Will. Good job. Good job. All right. All right. All right. Where's Brian at? Hey, come here, I want you. I want this guy, come here. Okay, now I'm gonna grab James. James, what do you do? So I run ticket sales for the Mindside Coach School. So he sells tickets. Does everybody get it? Okay, so you sell tickets to events. Would you agree? I agree. Okay, so here's what he does. As some, like, I'm just gonna give an example. Like my company, we sell our tickets. Does that make sense? Okay, you guys bought a ticket from someone that works at the LA Group. But other companies, they're like, man, I want to do this event. I need help selling these tickets. Okay? Ready? Ready. What's your number one objection you get? I can't stand any other. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, people don't reach out and say, hey, I'm reaching out. I can't stand talking to these people. But sell me a ticket. Give me a real objection. Um, scheduling, price points. I'm, like, I'm busy that weekend. Price is too expensive. Okay, cool. Hey. Hey, by the way, you ready? So I'm going to hit him. Hey, man, I really appreciate you. Thanks for taking my call. And by the way, they request information on tickets. Does that make sense? Yeah, Just so you guys are aware, I request some information on this event. He reaches out. He's like, hey, man, what's going on? I've got this event. It's going to be badass. I'm like, cool, what date? He tells me, he's like, damn, I can't do that, man. I got something planned on me and the family. You know what I'm saying? Is that right? Right. Okay, cool. So I'm going to hit him with that objection. Hey, I mean, I really appreciate it. It sounds like a cool event I want to go to.
but uh, I, I just can't do it that weekend, so I'm going to have to pass. Go. I, I agree. I agree. What was something that you should not do that? Why do you call it yelling? No, no, no. I mean, I, I like it. I just, I, we're going to be busy that weekend. What are you guys doing? Let me ask. Uh, we're doing something with the family. Uh, I agree, man. I love my time with my family. However, what do you guys think? Are you guys going to that weekend? No, I'm going to spend some time with the family. I love that. I love that. I love that. How many kids you got? I got three kids. Three kids. That's awesome. That's awesome. Man. Well, listen, um, what we're doing, man, close to school, really, really, and we're looking to really provide generational wealth, whether it's through solar, roofing, contracting, and I would say, like, you like, it like, like, you have four, uh, four children, man, trying to get a generational wealth. Okay. Are you closing me? No. Okay. <laughs> you stuck, dog. All right, listen to me. Hey, hey, question number one, listen to me. Hey. Everybody's busy. Quite, number one, everybody's busy. Listen, I always say this, everybody's busy. But obviously things that are important should come first. And I'm glad you said that you're doing something with your family because it's about time that people in this world need to start do it, putting their family first. In a world full of people who actually, where there's a shortage of commitment, you sound like somebody who's like super committed to hitting your dreams and your goals and taking your family to another level. Would you agree, yes or no? I agree. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you a question. There's 365 days in a year, and all 365 of those days, you should be spending with your family. But I'm gonna ask you one question, okay? Can you grab a pen piece of paper while I'm with you on the phone? Can you do that? Can you grab it? Okay, write this down. Write down your mortgage, okay? Write down your cars. I want you to write down your bank account, okay? I want you to write down, how old are you right now? 29. You're 29 years old. You've probably been working since you're at least 18. Am I right? If you've been working since you're 18, you're 29 years old, you've been working for 11 years, I want you to look up and I want you to write down the word savings account. Now I want to ask you a question. If you could, if you could make the commitment to come to this event and we could guarantee and ensure that over the last 11 years, I don't know how much money you saved, but you're going to write that down right now. You're going to look at that piece of paper and I'm guaranteeing you it's not enough. And I guarantee that your wife and your kids, you probably made a lot of false promises to them that one day that you were going to get ahead. If this event so happened to fall on a weekend that you planned with your family, if you told your wife that, you know what, I'm recommitting. See, there's a time to recommit. I'm recommitting, honey, to the promise that I made to you and the kids. And by the way, listen to me, we're going to buy a ticket for her too because she's going to come here. But if I had to go there, I'd go there. But we're going to recommit to the dreams over the last 11 years that you said you are going to hit. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to come out to this event. We're going to show you. We're going to give you the information that you need to have what? A transformation to pay your mortgage off, to pay your house off, to, to literally go give your family the lifestyle they deserve. Listen, I promise you, one normal weekend with your family or a total transformation to show your family that you could take your family to another level in life, that's what you want to do. By the way, you wouldn't have reached out. You wouldn't have made the call. You wouldn't have entered the information if you weren't willing to make the trip. Okay? There's always a reason why you can't make it. Okay? There's always a reason why. Look, I'm going to ask you a question. Is your family worth it? Do you believe you're worth it? Do you think the last 11 years have gotten you to where you want? You're just some information away from a total transformation in your life. Dude, you wouldn't have reached out about this ticket if that person, you wouldn't have looked up to them as a mentor. The way that life works right now in 2023 is that you find people who have gone where you want to go. And you get as close to these people as possible and you get in proximity to these people. And then what happens is you actually become what these people have. Do listen, I love to compress time frames. I love to turn decades into days. And what I would do is that I would literally paint a picture of like, you're going to spend time with your family. And by the way, if it was me, I'm going to tell you, because if it was my event, you guys already know what I would say. It's like, hey man, I can't come to this Andy Elliott event because I'm doing something with my family. I would say, well, if you know anything about Andy Elliott, he would tell you you're going to buy a ticket with your kids and you're going to bring your family. Okay, so like really you just leveled up your weekend and you're going to bring your family with you and that's probably something you've never done since you're 18 years old. You've probably went to train and you left your family behind, but since you understand Andy's core value and how he believes, you're actually, his wife's going to be with him too when he's training. So you're actually going to bring your family with you. That way they can help support you and hold you accountable and you can take your family with you, which nobody does. The success you've been trying to get, the reason why you haven't got it is because you haven't been taking your family with you. And since your family's going to be with you at that weekend, we actually want them too. So let's sell everybody a ticket. Hell yeah. Okay? I'm just telling you right now when I say this, dude, whatever objection you get, does it sound like you're trying to sell somebody? I mean, does it sound like it, right? Like when somebody says no, you notice how a lot of us will stutter step, we dance around? You feel me? Do you think people can feel that? Yeah, they can feel it, okay? What do you do? Oh, you sell cars? Okay, cool, watch this. Okay, all right, how long have you been selling for? About two and a half years. Okay, 
Guys, what's the number one objection you'll get in automotive? Okay, but that's easy. We already covered that. Huh? Ready? Okay. Hey, we're on a pencil. What does that mean? You know when you go into the car dealership and you sit down, you're looking face to face with the people you saw it online for twenty nine nine, and they're like, and they're like, what's your best price? Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And they look at you. You're sitting across from them. That's what we're going to do right now. You bought a car before, right? Cool. We're looking at them and I say, hey, I saw it on the internet for $29.9. I'm sitting across from him and I say, what's your best price? Go. Hey Andy, I'm so glad that you asked that. So um, you came in on this vehicle for a certain reason. You, uh, you, uh, so anyways, you, you came in on this vehicle for a certain reason. Obviously this vehicle suits your needs. It sounds like it's just a matter of the price, right? Yes. Okay. So you wouldn't have chosen us if we weren't priced accordingly. My dealership, we actually use active market pricing. So that way when the market changes, we adjust the price for you. We actually listen to what our customers wanted, and we actually make it super, super easy for you that we don't have to work for, for, the, for the best deal. Have I offended you in any way of giving you my best price up front? Okay, good job. Hey, by the way, you're doing a good job. Okay, so anytime, anytime you're looking at somebody in the face and they say, what's your best price? Number one, I love what he said. He said, I'm so glad you asked that. Okay, is your, is your company different, yes or no? Okay, you need to take your hand, put it on your chest and say, I'm so glad you asked that. What we do at our company is a little bit different. We're not like everybody, everybody else. It's 2023, it's the age of transparency. You know what we've learned? We've learned that, a, that most of our customers wanna get the best price up front and they don't wanna negotiate and haggle, okay? Isn't it 2023? Yes, everybody wants the best deal up front? That's why we have what? Very expensive tools and we have accurate technology that finds vehicles in the marketplace just like the one that you're looking at right now, this 2019 Ford F-150 with 38,000 miles. Then that technology finds that vehicle and ensures that we're the lowest price within a 500 mile radius. So all the research has already been done for you. By the way, we don't wanna sell you one car, we wanna sell you every car you buy for the rest of your life. If I was to take this car and mark it back up $3,000, just like they did back in the old school days, and then turn around and bring it back down $3,000 when you ask for a better deal, would that be trustworthy or respectful? No. We're looking for a further relationship than just today. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna ask him a simple question at the end. Have I offended you in any way, in any way at all by giving you my best price up front? Have I? No, thank goodness. Take your hand, put it in their chest, say sign right here, let me get your new car cleaned up. By the way, when do you want your first payment due? Towards the beginning of the month, the middle of the month, what's gonna work best for you and your family? Roll right into a close. Listen to me, people ask for a better deal. Does that mean they want one? They just ask. I ask all the time. Can I get a better deal? Is that your best price? That's what people ask. When they ask, they're gonna look in your eyes. When they look in your eyes, they're going to see if you believe. Most of you in here, you, you, you get nervous when people ask for a better deal. It's no big deal. You guys get it? Are people allowed to ask for a better deal? Yes. Is it scary? No. no. It's just stupid. We should literally, as managers, hit our salespeople 15 times a day. What's your best price? What's your best price? Can I get a better deal? Until they absolutely feel comfortable in their skin answering that question. I'm so glad you asked that. What we do here is a little bit different. They need to believe it. Guys, listen to me. I'm going to explain something to you. Can you get somebody to believe something that you don't believe in your own eyes? You know what I want? If you lead a team or if you're a salesperson in here, I want you to write down your top five, top 10 objections when you go home tonight. And I want you to literally look in the mirror and also I want you to record yourself while you say them. And I guarantee when you watch the video when you're done, you're gonna be very upset. I guarantee you don't look the way you wanna look. But you know what I know? I know the more you do it, the more you practice it, the better you're gonna become. And I know that's how bad asses are made, okay? And dude, this little simple thing, what we're doing in this room right now, this is called growing. This is how we become badasses. What do you do? Solar. Okay, solar. Let's hit him with an objection. Okay? So he's going to go through all the numbers with me, and then I'm going to go to this side of the room. Okay, we go through all the numbers. Are you a setter? Setter, yeah. Okay, he's a setter. What does that mean, guys? 
He's at the front door. Okay, what does that mean? He's setting appointments for closers to come in. Now, how long have you been doing solar for? One year. Okay, if he's setting appointments and he's been doing setting for one year, right? I know you know your script, am I right? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have, remember when I scripted it right there up front? Okay, watch, come with me. This is what I want you guys to do. I want, if you guys are gonna train your team, you literally create a room where people know what's gonna happen every day. They know where it's gonna happen, they know what to expect. The reason why your team doesn't like training is because you're not training them all the time. You train your team every day. I train my team every day. I don't train them. Sometimes they know when I train them. When do I train them? First thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, every morning. First thing in the morning, every morning. Dude, if I come in, they're like, hey, I got a deal. Shut up, get over here. You're not getting out of this. I need everybody to be on their game in our company. If our company wants to increase, what do we need to do? Be the best. Always train in the morning. Knock the dust off your team or knock the dust off yourself before the day begins, okay? So cool, these are your customers. Knock, knock. Andy says, hello, go. What's going on, man? Good, what's up? Uh, I'm Spence, I'm Lumio's project manager. I, I do all the solar in the area. And I'm curious, you don't have any on your house. What's kept you from looking into it? What? Hold, hold on, hold on. If he knocked on your door, would you know what the f he's saying? Relax. Come here, man. I got you, baby. Relax. Tell him to relax. relax. Tell him to relax. Okay, here, take, take, take your hand. Okay, relax. See how calm it is? Now do me a favor. Hold your hand up the whole time you talk. Okay. All right, now talk to him and keep your hand like that because you're going to relax. Okay. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay, who are you? Spencer. Okay. Say hi, my name's Spencer. Hi, my name's Spencer. I'm with? I'm with Lumio. I'm their project manager. And why are you here? I do all the solar in the area. Okay, do you want to say solar right when they open that door? Yep. But why? Uh, gives them room to, just lets them know, I'm direct, straight to the point, and it's gonna give them, every, every homeowner's gonna say, I'm not interested. So it's gonna start well, off. Well, you don't know that they're gonna say that. Because, because if you handle it right, they don't have to say I'm not interested. Like, I don't want you to say I'm not interested. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't fucking like that. So I'm gonna be like, hi, my name is Spencer. My company's been allocated in this area because research shows in the next 12 to 18 months, utility bills are gonna double or triple. Look, I just got two quick questions to ask you, then I'm gonna be on my way, unless you have some additional information, okay? Question number one, do you, number one, do you believe you're gonna have energy all the days of your life? Like, do you love energy? Will you always use it? Will you always pay your utility bill? Yeah? You'll never run your house off candles, right? Like you're always gonna want energy. Would you agree? Yeah. Okay, cool. Question number two, do you believe inflation is real? Do you believe things are costing more money? Yeah? Cool. Well, since you'll always want energy and you believe inflation is real, I got a third question. If your current energy company was to triple your utility bill, if you didn't pay it, you would run your house off candles. And by the way, if, if they did triple your energy, you would have to pay it because there's no secondary energy option. There's not one. My name is Andy Elliott. I'm here with Lumio Solar. I'm the project manager. What we've learned is that a lot of these houses in this area are qualifying for solar, which is a secondary energy option. It allows you to be inflation proof and it actually saves you money per month. And as a homeowner, I notice you don't lease or, or rent, you actually can own your own energy. I noticed you had a car in your driveway. Is that your car? Yeah. yeah, you have a car in your driveway. I'm guaranteed there was a contract in which there was an end date on payments that would be due on it, and then you would own it after that. Am I right? Would you have drove that car that you have if the payment was 450 a month? If they didn't tell you that it, it was, there was an end date, it was 60 or 72 months, they said it was for the rest of your life, would you have bought it? No. No. Is there ever an end date to your current energy bill? No. What if I told you, and I'm guessing you're probably 40 years old, that you're probably gonna to live to at least be 80, so for the next 40 years, you're gonna be paying energy. What if I told you that you could literally opt in to like a 25 year agreement at a lower current energy bill, and then you'd own it and never make a payment for the rest of your life? Would you be interested in learning more about it? Whatever it is, your job is to create interest, not create an objection. Like, I'm fucking seeing salespeople that want to create objections. People are like, I try to create objections, why so get them to say no? I'm like, why? Like, why would we make it easy to say yes to, hard to say no to, and make it their idea? Like, why wouldn't we? 
You know, I see salespeople just in the automotive industry. Do you know that most salespeople don't even know how to shake a hand? Do you guys know that? G give me an automotive guy. Okay, come here. Come here. I want to show you something. Isn't it crazy? Some of you in here expect that people should know how to handle stuff. Okay? Come shake my hand. Here, I just got out of my car. I just got out of my car. I step out. Go. Welcome in. My name's Austin. Here, here hand, hand him that real quick. Welcome in to Jerry. Oh, my name's Austin. 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 Yeah. Are you going to see anybody in particular? Uh, no, I'm just driving by. Perfect. Well, welcome in. Welcome in. So, um, are you looking for a particular vehicle? Relax. Yeah. First of all, relax. Hey, hope you're having the best day of your life. Andy Elliott. What's your name? Austin Miller. Austin, nice to meet you, sir. Have I let go of his hand? No. Why? Because he's important to me. Okay, have you guys been waiting for a client all day long to come in here and roll up and buy a car? Why are we treating it like we haven't been? We fucking don't care. Right? Dude, have you ever walked up, Brett, and shake somebody's hand and they say, hey, what's up, Andy? How you doing? Hey, it's like, hey, Andy Elliott, nice to meet you, man. It means everything to me that you're here. You can tell when I hold that hand just a little bit longer that I am grateful that you're here. Am I right? You know what I know? COVID disconnected everybody. You want to win? How you doing? My name's Andy Yelly. I'm glad you're here. What's your name? Austin Miller. Austin, nice to meet you, sir. Okay? I don't care how old he is. Look at me in the eye. Okay? Are you here for sales or service? Are you here to see somebody in the service department? Or are you here to see somebody in sales? How can I serve you today? How can I serve you today? Looking for a vehicle. Looking for a vehicle. Is there somebody particular that you're here to see, or do I have the honor of helping you today? Do you have the honor? Oh, well, you, you can help well me. no, you're already, you're already mirroring me. You can help me the show. But do you see he's already mirroring me? Who's running this show? I'm going to tell you the craziest thing. Page your sales teams. Page them into the sales towers. Say, come shake my hand. You're going to learn this, what you get. I'm Andy, what's your name? Austin. Austin, nice to meet you. What are you looking for today? They fucking suck. You wonder why people don't love us? Because we're not full of love. We don't even care. It shows on our face we're so transactional. Like, dude, when I shake your hand and I hold your hand, that's relational. Do you guys feel me? Hey, hey, I know there's people in this room that think this is stupid. Go look at your bank account, look at mine. I'm not being a dick. <laughs> Clearly, you're missing so many key important things to the art of selling, okay? Sir, by the way, my name's Andy Alley. What's your name? Austin. Austin, it's a pleasure to meet you, sir. Can I help you find somebody? Are you looking for someone in service or are you looking for someone in sales? Okay, look at my eyes. I care, I genuinely care. I'm not here to, sell. I'm not here to do anything with you. I just wanna make sure you get helped. We're not gonna sell anybody, we're gonna help people. He says, I'm looking for service. You don't say over there, you say, awesome. Sir, my name is Andy Elliott, I do work on the sales side. Unfortunately, I won't be able to service your car, but I would, I'm gonna walk you over here, I would like to give you my card. If you need something, you holler at me, you need a cup of coffee, you text me, I'll bring it over, okay? Smile, walk them over to service. Half of those people reach out to you. Okay, once I'm, once, they say he doesn't say service, and he says sales, what do I say? Awesome, again, my name is Andy. Is there someone that you're here to see, or do I have the honor of helping you today? Okay, do I have the honor? What does that mean? You're special to me. Could I be the one, or do I need to get someone else? No, 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 we're not here to see anybody. Awesome. Well, again, and hey, dude, I, I, I'll reach my hand out, I'll say, my name is Andy Elliott, so I want to put a name with the face and shake your hand again since I'm the one that's going to be serving you. My job, I tell them my job. My job is to give you world-class customer service and to take care of you and your family and all the highest levels that are important to you. It's an honor to help you today. I'm grateful. So what brings you in? What are we looking for? What am I going to do? I'm going to set the tone. Does that make sense? Salespeople don't do this no more. That's why they're broke. Salespeople don't crush records anymore. This is why they're broke. Dude, and by the way, leaders' job are to see if their salespeople know this stuff. Like I see, I see people not hitting their quotas, and you know what they're doing? They're literally lowering the bar instead of training higher. Okay? Like, like 
It's so, it's so crazy. I, I see people in the automotive space right now bitching and complaining that you can't buy cars. Dude, there's cars everywhere. You're just trying to buy them the old fashioned way and you don't have buying centers. I would literally, if it was me, I would literally open a buying center in my company and I would hire people that their job all day long was to call everybody on Craigslist, everybody on Facebook, every place around us in a 50 mile radius and try to buy cars. But that would take too much energy. Or that costs us money. It costs you money to buy a car. No, you pay them on the buy. These people, I guarantee you, brought, you brought them in your dealership and you told them how to pick up the phone and call people. They, hey, hey, it's Andy Elliott down here. You know, we're, we're at the Morgan Group. I don't know if you've driven by one of our 90 stores we have, but you know, we, we noticed you have a vehicle for sale. We've noticed we got lots of clients that are interested in just like your vehicle. We wanted to ask you a question. If we offered you more money than it was worth, would you mind if we got an opportunity to look at it? Would that be okay? Awesome, man. I'm over here at X, Y, and Z address. Could you bring it by? My name's Andy, I'm the deal coordinator. You know, I'm the inventory manager. I just want to take a peek at it. Literally take five minutes. By the way, if we do like the car, I mean, our money's good today. We could pay off a bank, write you a check, whatever. We don't care. Okay. We just want to see if you'd be willing to drive by. We are the best buyer in town right now. I mean, we love buying inventory. Just want to know when you can make it by. Do people be driving cars by your store all day long? I'll bet, I'll bet half those people end up buying something on your lot too and driving out. We won't do that though. It's too much work. We got, we got deals to work. Bullshit. Bullshit, you're lazy. And by the way, you know what's crazy? Is, is this is how easy it is to smoke everybody's ass. Am I right? Okay, hey, appreciate you, man. I know you got up here a little nervous, and hey, I appreciate you. Come on, let's grab somebody else. Let's come over here. Hey guys, I just wanna tell you, the true one percenters, you made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with a friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications, and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.